Brock told me that this animation would have cost the studio over $12,000 to make and would have taken over 10 days. I made it in just under two hours. Today I'm going to show you the entire AI playbook. We're going to go from a simple idea in Gemini to creating the perfect images in Midjourney, animating them with VO 3.1, and then adding the final cinematic touches in CapCut. No fluff, let's get right into it. Okay, we are currently in Gemini. The way that I started out this project was I was just looking to blow off some steam, trying to do something a little bit fun. So I just told it in general that I'm going to be picking an SREF, which is a style reference in Midjourney. And I'm going to be creating them in Midjourney, animating them in VO3. I started in VO3, ended in VO3.1. And then I want to make just like a little sequence, like a five sequence video. And I just told it, give me all of the Midjourney prompt. Give me all of the vo3 animation prompts and i just want to be able to get the images animate the images and then put the sequence together so that's what i did i use whisper flow and i'll just talk that out you know put that into words here i was initially concerned about maintaining character consistency but ultimately what i figured is you know i'd just give it a shot using omni reference and mid journey and see how it did and it did pretty well actually the first app that we got i was very you know open with this i wasn't sure what i wanted to do i didn't really like the sequence that it came up with so i just told it that and then it gave me another one the first one was like a mage the second one is a cyberpunk courier just wasn't what i was looking to do i knew that the srf i was going to use seemed very dragon ball z style and i'll show it to you in a second so I just told it, I want it to be more like Dragon Ball Z style. So it came out with the prompts that ultimately I used. When I'm talking about ultimately using these prompts, sometimes you'll find a weird thing here or there that you'll have to adjust for. Like if you see something persistent that shows up in each of the generations, then you just have to identify that and either prompt it out with like a negative prompt telling it not to do that or just add more specificity for something that you're wanting to see that it's not creating. I almost didn't even read it just because I was trying to get this done really quick. I had pretty much everything I needed. So I jumped right over to Mid Journey. And the, this is the explore section. And right now we're under styles, which is where you're going to find different S traps. You see these numbers here. You'll go in. I like to click on them because when you're just seeing three pictures, you don't necessarily get the full scope of of the images. So I like to see all the images in the example, I hit down, go to the next one. If you see something you like, like this is a pretty cool style that I wanna use later, you hit like, and that'll save it for you in your like section. And within my like section, if you look, if you go all the way, I think it was like the first SRF I saved, yeah, right here. This is the one that I used for that Dragon Ball Z video. And the reason why I thought to do Dragon Ball Z is because right over here, that looks a lot like a Dragon Ball Z character, doesn't it? So I knew that it would probably work pretty well for this use case. We had our SRF, we had our prompts from Gemini, and then I went right into to, you know plugging in those prompts to get my, my first images. Again, we don't have a character yet, so I'm I'm seeing, okay, we're doing pretty well in terms of powerful martial artists with a, with spiky hair and orange gi, and we're already getting Goku. So we're right on track. Ultimately, I, I liked this one, and that's the one I picked. And what I did from here was I just used this image now as the omni reference for future images. So if you go here, you'll see the prompt that was used. You'll see the aspect ratio is 16 by nine. This is the style reference that we had found earlier. And when you're creating something like this, you'll just have the prompt in this section. You'll have the aspect ratio here, or you can pick it over here, landscape, or pick the specific aspect ratio. And then you'll have the, the SREF, and then you're just going away and plugging away and generating, right? As you can see over here, there's this print 
and there's a, a border. I just cropped those out when I uploaded the image to VO3, VO3.1, and it's really easy to do. So I took this image and I'm gonna use it now. This is my character going forward for, for the rest of the scenes, right? So I took this, I went over here. Now you can see that this image is the the reference so if I go over here into the you know into this section, I'll hit plus here, and you can see that you're able to drag in a an omni reference, right? So I kept it at 300 was the was the number that I used to, for the reference, and yeah, it's that simple. You can delete it, you can add other stuff, but yeah. So really, just a lot of times you're gonna have to experiment. Like you can see, it really took the the reference pretty literally here because that was like the initial image. So. You know, it takes some generations, you'll get some stuff. Ultimately, this was the one that I really liked. So I, you know, I went, I was like, okay, perfect, that's perfect. Also, just to kind of cut ahead a little bit, I did generate the rest of the images using this single Omni reference, like this initial Omni reference. So I started to test them out just to see like what would come from the generations in VO3 if you know, if the, the style would be dropped, if it would look too like, you know, weirdly cartoony, like not in this kind of way. So so what I did was I ran a few tests and, you know, you'll see some of them were pretty bad. Ah! Pretty pathetic, yeah, it's not good. And then this one over here actually surprised me and maybe changed the direction that I was gonna go in terms of which Omni reference I would use. Check it out. Ah! Um, I thought that was pretty good. And I think you kind of lose the stylization of that, the gritty reference here. So I actually just cut this a little bit short when I, in, in the edit and just cut it like right around here where you can't really tell very much. I took a screenshot of this and I used, I used that image now as my Omni reference going forward. So I remade the scenes three, four, and five using this Omni reference now, because now I wanted it to be Super Saiyan. I didn't think about that initially. So you'll see over here, I all the future images were created with this Omni reference over here. And we'll open it up. This was the Omni reference that I used and just brought it in like that. And there you go. So it generated each of those scenes. You saw them now here, first, second, third, fourth. And then I, I was, going between two for the for the final one i wasn't really sure which one i wanted to do but i thought you know what it never hurts to have a couple to experiment between because i liked both of them it was just kind of going to be up to which which one would animate the best so now going into vo3 i animated them i took the the initial images and something that i did was i would do like you know since i'm on the ultra plan i can just generate as many as I want. So I would do pretty much 12 generations at a time, a lot of times, usually eight, between eight and 12. And that's how I got to the, the final result. And you can do it pretty quick. And if you're seeing something that's, again, specifically weird, recurring, you make those adjustments in the prompt and then you're good to go. Some of the things that happened when VO 3.1 came out actually made it more simple for me because in the final edit, which we're about to get to, there were certain scenes that I, I filled in. For example, you know, this was one of the images that we created, an image to video, but the 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 next scene was was this one. And going from, you know, from this to this was a little bit jarring. So I just did first frame, last frame. And I took the last frame of this scene and I just had it bridge the gap to him now going over here. So. That's also a cool hack and something fun and easy that you can now do with VO3.1. You're able to do that with other video models as well. But yeah, so just put the scenes in here, cut them a little bit shorter. You're almost never gonna use a full generation. Whenever you're creating a video or a project, it's very rare that you're gonna use the full, even eight second generation. I mean, a lot of times maybe you'll you'll prompt within the prompt to, to cut in between. So you'll get multiple cuts you know, within that single sequence which i've done before in other projects you're just grabbing what works and what looks good and again like you know this was one this was the final scene that ultimately looked good but to get from him kind of blasting here and this shooting here i didn't want to just have him being on the floor so again i did a first frame last frame the first frame being this 
and then the last frame being this, just to get him landing. It did a whole sequence before that, but I just grabbed the end of it to get him landing so there's a little bit more continuity there. I just added a couple simple effects. So effects, you can go over here in this section and you can see if I turn off this effect, it's a lot weaker of a scene. You don't really feel the energy as much, so I just, you know, this is just gonna be to taste. Let's see that again. So it adds a little bit to it. There was an effect that I, I threw in over here it's called Black Flash. It just adds a little bit more to the blast, which we can see. So there's a couple couple flashes there, adds to it. And over here, there, there was a darkened flash, which is this cool effect, which I kind of had it like flash white out to, and then coming back in with that same effect as well, the darkened flash. And you're able to mess around with the speed and the strength and the glow. And, you know, depending on the effect, it has like strength and speed just to get it right. Like this, this shake was a lot more subtle. You can see here, it's at a two and a seven versus this shake, a lot more aggressive. It was at a 33 and a 50. So, you know, this is just gonna be to taste, gonna be messing around. There's a few transitions I threw in as well. This is a dark flash transition. You can find them over here in CapCut. You know, you would just search for that. And over here, there's another dark flash. And, you know, the, the length of it is different. You're gonna, that's also gonna be to taste. You're gonna see over here, all these different sound effects. Some of them are me just drawing out the sound from the clips, from the audio that was generated. But really a lot of it is me just like adding some more volume, adding some more oomph, adding some more sound to the blast, adding some more impact to the sound adding some more atmosphere. Sound is really ultimately what's gonna level up your projects a lot. So when you can get into sound and you can make the adjustments and just like add a little bit here, not too much, but like getting that right, it really adds so much. And that's the same thing goes with the music. You know, you can see here, if I just hit V and turn this off. Versus now turning on the music. It really adds a lot. And there's a lot of royalty free sound effects you can you know, work with. You can create your own sound effects within Eleven Labs, which I've done a lot of times. These, a lot of these sound effects happen to be from Artlist, which I, you know, is a service that I pay for and you know, has some pretty good sound effects. But uh, some of them are also royalty free that I've just found online. And yeah, I mean, really, you know, using AI to identify these different places, like where can I find like Dragon Ball Z sound effects royalty free? You know, just asking Perplexity or Grok or, or Gemini, you're going to get the answers that you need. But that's pretty much all that all that it was. Like I said, this took about two hours to create in terms of the video. I think I spent a little bit more time just tuning things with the sound. Super fast, super fun. And uh, I'm excited to see what you guys can create. I'm going to leave, you know, all the prompts within the post so you guys can follow along. You guys can try to create your own and mess around. What I'm looking to do is just help you guys out as much as possible, give you guys all the sauce I can. And this is just a very simple project. We're gonna go into more uh, complex projects in the future and show you guys all the professional workflows and show you that it's really not so intimidating. It just takes time and some practice. You guys got this. Think about a general idea, have AI help you flesh it out. And then here we are, we're with the, basically a finished product. Guys, if this video helped you, I'd love for you guys to share it, to follow, to subscribe to my newsletter where there's gonna be a written form of this tutorial within. And it really helped me, motivate me to continue to put out content, to continue to give you guys the sauce and help you guys out as much as possible. All right, thank you so much. Please share with your friends. Please show me your creations and share them below. It'd be super cool to see what you guys come up with. Thank you so much.